Hong Kong land for Hong Kong people being put aside. Hong Kong EU's new vice chancellor vows to uphold core values. And in Taiwan, supporters of Cross Strait Service Trade Pact take to the streets. Good evening. More pan democratic lawmakers have decided to join a LegCo group on a trip to Shanghai later this month to meet with central government officials. They include members of the Civic Party, the Labour Party, and the Professional Teachers Union. The Democratic Party will decide on whether or not to go at a central committee meeting on Thursday. Stephanie Cho reports. Yesterday was the deadline for lawmakers to sign up for the Shanghai trip with the LegCo Secretariat. Only two pan-Democrats, Luang Kwok Hung and Frederick Fung, confirmed that they will go on the trip set for April 12th and 13th. This morning, the pan-Democrats held a meeting on the issue. Afterwards, lawmakers from the Civic Party, the Labour Party and the Professional Teachers Union said they too will go to Shanghai. But some others are still waiting for the central government's response as to whether pan-Democrats will have a separate meeting with Beijing officials. They are counting on LegCo President Zhang yok sings optimism that an exclusive meeting can be arranged. And we are disappointed with uh, the central people's government's refusal to even at this late stage confirm the arrangement. We therefore would uh, uh, ask the president, who is of course the leader of the delegation, to see to it that uh, the arrangement, which is most reasonable uh, by the pan-democrats, would uh, actually be realized. Secretary for Constitutional and Mainland Affairs Raymond Tam, who will also be going on the trip, said he is glad to see more lawmakers expressing interest in it. It is a very good basis for the ongoing consultation and our ongoing process to bridge uh, the differences um, among various political parties. The Democratic Party will decide whether they'll go on the trip after a central committee meeting on Thursday. Pan-Democrats will also set up a working group the following day to discuss their roles and strategies for the trip. Stephanie Choi, TVB News. Well, Chief Executive Leung Sheng ying hinted today that the Hong Kong land for Hong Kong people policy is being put aside for now. He explained that's because the Hong Kong property market is no longer overheated. Rachel Leung reports. The Hong Kong Land for Hong Kong People policy was part of the government's response to complaints that property prices were out of reach for many local residents. But only two pieces of land in Kai Tak were up for sale under the scheme last year. When asked this morning whether the policy is still in effect, Chief Executive Leung Chen Ying said the local property market is no longer overheated. Demand from overseas buyers, he believes, is now minimal. But if needed, he said, measures that favor local buyers can be quickly reintroduced. For the buyers of the flats at the Kai Tak site, they can resell their properties to only Hong Kong residents in the first 30 years. If they rent their flats to non-Hong Kong residents, they can do this for only up to five years. China Overseas Land bought the Kai Tak plot for more than $4.5 billion. That works out at more than $5,000 per square foot. Analysts say that's not any cheaper than market prices. Li Wang Dad, chairman of a think tank on the land use, points out the flaws of the Hong Kong land for Hong Kong people policy. The first loophole is that uh, because of the first, first two sales of land, the premium is very high. The second is that uh, there are so many uh, loopholes in the how you can stop actually uh, the mainland or the speculators actually through the second or the third sales can become the real owner. Because there's a lot of arrangement, for example, through the trust or through some kinds of uh, overseas PG Islands company register or using some kind of uh, rent arrangement so that actually they own the flats and um, actually can evade from this kind of policy. The Hong Kong Land for Hong Kong People policy was among Leung Chen Ying's election promises. He suggested back then that the policy should be written into law. But a member of the Long-Term Housing Strategy Steering Committee thinks the scheme will no longer be acceptable. I think it's quite appropriate for the government to make suitable changes to his policy. Uh, now that the Hong Kong Land for Hong Kong People uh, probably may not be uh, really necessary when there is, when there are already other measures 
and there are already other market changes taking place in Hong Kong, uh, which will effectively uh, curb the property prices uh, from further increases in the, in, in the future. Today, a spokesman for the Development Bureau said there's no pressing need for a law on Hong Kong land for Hong Kong people. He added, though, that preparations for legislation are underway and the government will continue to monitor changes in the property market. Rachel Ling, TVB News. The new vice-chancellor of the University of Hong Kong, Peter Matheson, took up his post today. He vowed to uphold Hong Kong's core values and protect academic freedom and the right to free speech. As Jenny Lam reports, he also promised to help students who might get into trouble while taking part in Occupy Central activities within the boundaries of the law. Aware of those who doubt the appointment of a non-Chinese as the new vice-chancellor of the University of Hong Kong, Peter Matheson showed off his linguistic skills on his first day at work. No ho wang sang, ho go heng, lang gao sing wei, kiong gong dai hok, dai sap kum gai hao jiong, no wui no le, hong hok sang, long si, tong si, hao yao, he was asked about students taking part in the Occupy Central movement. I support the students' right to peaceful protest. Uh, I support free speech and will stand up for those core values. I also respect the law and the university will help any students that happen to uh, participate or to get into any trouble in uh, Occupy Central, but always within the boundaries of respect for the law. On recent criticisms that public opinion surveys conducted by the university are biased against the government, Matheson said the methodology of the polls is scientific and he vowed to protect academic freedom. Peter Matheson qualified in medicine from London Hospital Medical College and is a fellow of the Royal College of Physicians. He was dean of the Faculty of Medicine and Dentistry at the University of Bristol before coming to Hong Kong. Jenny Lam, TVB News. In Taipei, a show of force today by supporters of a controversial trade service pact with the mainland. And a war of words erupted over who's responsible for the political crisis on the island. Chaotic scenes at the legislative yuan, which has been occupied by student protesters for two weeks now. Today, a number of groups in support of the controversial trade deal made their way to the parliamentary compound, demanding dialogue with the demonstrators. There was a heavy police presence as authorities tried to prevent violence between the two sides. Among the 2,000 or so government supporters there, Chang An Le, commonly known as White Wolf, an alleged gangster who leads the China Unification Promotion Party. Noting that the students care about society, Chang stressed the need to restore order. He accused the student protesters of holding the legislative yuan hostage and made clear the occupation should end. Some of those taking part in the march tried to break through the police lines as they approached the legislative building. Student protesters hit back. They blame the impasse on President Ma ying failure to address their demands. Supporters and opponents of the trade deal did hold brief talks outside the legislative yuan, but nothing came of it. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has pledged to do what he can to keep the world's third largest economy afloat. Abe's comments came as a sales tax hike took effect today. Japan's sales tax went up from 5% to 8%. It's the first such increase since 1997. Abe hopes the move will stabilize government finances. But some economists are worried that the tax hike could slow or even derail an economic recovery. Meanwhile, some consumers snapped up food and household items before the sales tax went up. But others say they don't believe buying ahead will result in much of a saving overall. They also worry about buying things that they don't really need. Abe today insisted he'll pay attention to people's lives and is prepared to take necessary action to boost the economy. Japan relaxed a decades-old ban on military-related exports today in a bid to expand joint arms development with allies. Japan's chief cabinet secretary Yoshihide Suga 
So the new guidelines are part of Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's push to bolster national security amid China's military expansion and North Korea's nuclear threats. He said the new export guidelines pave the way for Japan to join arms technology development with the U.S. and other allies in order to acquire more advanced defense capabilities and equipment. The move reverses Japan's almost half-century-old self-imposed restrictions on weapons-related exports. China's foreign ministry said it was paying great attention to the Japanese move, adding that Tokyo should take actions that are more conducive to regional peace. And still ahead in our news. Hikes and public utility charges and other fees take effect. Road subsidence in Tokwa Wan. And government not ruling out sponsoring polls in political reform consultation. This is the old time. I've been had. I've only been in Marrakesh for five minutes and already I've been scammed. What's Connor's advice? to help you avoid his fate on your next journey. You need to keep your eyes open. He's not alone, he's working as a team. Wednesday, Scam City at 9.30 on Pearl. Will Cup Brazil, Tournament of the Strongest, is supported by... Bupa. Nivea Men. Broadway. Trumpet brand, Sir Rogan. Pizza Hut. Wing Hang Credit. Smiley Growth, New Zealand Infant Milk Powder. State Health. Go to California and feast with a thousand fishes. Then we shimmy down to Chicago for a taste of old world Poland. Is that terrible? Horrible! And in Japan, try some nostalgic nourishment. Test. Thursday, world's weirdest restaurants at 9.30 on Pearl. And welcome back to TVB News. The disappearance of the Malaysia Airlines flight MH370 has prompted aviation experts to demand real-time trackers to be fitted on all passenger aircraft. As Sonia Terra reports, Malaysia's Prime Minister will head to Australia to witness ongoing search efforts in the Indian Ocean. It was a busy day at the airport in Perth, where 11 planes are working to solve the aching mystery of where flight MH370 vanished. Even with additional help of nine ships, search coordinators warn the hunt could drag on for a very long time. Essentially, we do not have um, any precision in where the, uh, where the aircraft entered the water. Malaysian Prime Minister Najib Razak plans to travel to Perth tomorrow to inspect search operations firsthand. More than three weeks into the hunt and not one of dozens of objects found in the Indian Ocean is linked to the missing plane. Equally disconcerting is the revelation that Malaysian officials misreported final communications from the cockpit. They said the co-pilot uttered the words, all right, good night, when in fact his exact words were, good night, Malaysian 370, which experts say is the standard sign-off. This aviation expert says you have to wonder why Malaysian authorities are not telling the truth. And unfortunately, this just gives the families of those, uh, the families of the victims, more evidence that things are being hidden from them, if you like. Hiding critical investigation details was painful.